What sort of things are lovely? So we are told to think of whatsoever things are lovely. Then the question is this. What is lovely? What are the things that are lovely to think about? So many things. What aspects? No better way than to see from the Word of God, I've said many times, God's definition of love. That is the best place to start with. So we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the place where God described what is love. And hopefully that will give us some ideas what to think about. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, what is love? And therefore, what we should think about. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now we've covered a few things there. Last week, we spoke specifically about um, verse, 30, uh, verse 4, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. We looked at charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up. So in this aspect, we are reminded, don't have envious thoughts. Envy is something that God says is not love. Envy is not love. Love envieth not. So we must be very careful of envious behaviors in our lives resulting from envious thoughts. Well, it begins with thoughts. Thoughts of envy is you want to have what the other person have that you don't have and you even wish that the other person will stop having what he or she has. So you want what others have that you don't have and you even wish that they stop having it. So these are envious thoughts. It could be students envying your friends who are smarter than you, very common. Maybe you envy your friends that are better looking than you. Those that are working in certain jobs, especially that calls for performance, that you are thrust in the limelight. Again, in those areas, we have to be very careful. Envious thoughts can occur very easily. Envious of our colleagues and parents, even envious of our children liking the other spouse more. Happens everywhere. So the Lord says, control those thoughts. If we are not careful with envious thoughts, it will lead to bad behaviors. You'll see that afterwards. But we also studied where is the cause or what is the cause of envy. Who remembers? Shane, do you remember what causes envy? Pride. Very good. Because in verse 4, and we saw many other verses from other parts of scriptures to support this. After the Lord says, charity envieth not, he said, but chari um, charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. In other places, God always very often relate envy being caused by pride. Well, it's natural, isn't it? Because you want others to like you more, you want others to um, admire you, you want to have more than others. It's all about ourselves. We want to be lifted up. That is the meaning of vaunteth itself, like lifted up on a pole, puffed up. We want to be so big, seen by everyone, known by everyone, and that as long as someone else is better known than you, liked more than you, you envy. Right? So God says, these are not the way to think. And then watch our pride. It stems from there. So proud pride is not loving thoughts. Not lovely thoughts, rather. They are not lovely thoughts. Pride, in fact, make you and I detestable. There's something that is very interesting about pride. The more we seek to be admired, 
we will end up doing things that make us more despised. Do you agree? We will behave in ways, we will clamor for attention, we will clamor for praise, and we will act in a way which end up actually making us uh, more despised. That is what pride does. But with those thoughts, God says in verse 5, look at verse 5. Now, charity does not behave itself unseemly. Charity does not behave itself unseemly. Envious thoughts, prideful thoughts, attitudes within us, if we keep dwelling on that kind of thoughts, we already studied. Why does Paul say, think on these things? Because thoughts affect our behavior, right? That's the whole point. That's why God says here. Now, if we don't watch verse 4, what will happen is verse 5. We will behave unseemly. We will behave in an unseemly way. It will come out to our actions. Now, what is this unseemly? What does it mean? So we say, let's have thoughts of things that are lovely. God says unseemliness is not lovely. Unseemliness is not lovely. Then we say, all right, I must not think unseemly thoughts. What, what is unseemly? I said before that when you look at what is love, and therefore what is lovely, you will find that God gives many negatives what it is not. Right? Out of these um, three verses, from verses 4 to, sorry, verses 4 to 7, there are many negatives. Love is not this, not this, not this, not this. It is not this. So we are also to learn what not to think about. What not to think about. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. Now there's a double negative here. Before we study this word, I want us to know how crucial it is for us to understand this part in order to think of lovely things. Look at verse 5. Does not, first negative, behave itself unseemly. Second negative, un. So instead of saying love behave itself seemly, God puts it in the double negative. So instead of love behave itself seemly, it says love does not behave itself Love does not behave itself unseemly. Double negative. It puts forth a very strong point. Are we having lovely thoughts that cause lovely behaviors? Now, this part is about behaviors now. Thoughts that will cause certain behaviors. And God says that if we have unseemly thoughts... We will behave like that. But love, in this double negative, it means love never ever behaves like that. Right? So get it. God says love never ever behaves like that. So we have to think. Thinking of whatsoever things that are lovely, that will, that will change my behavior, this is one of the things God says love never ever behaves like that. So when I looked at it, then I say, Wow. This is one thing that God put in double negative and say, if I'm behaving in a lovely way, this is something that never happens. What is unseemly? I better understand it. Unseemly is used in the Bible, well, or seemly used in the Bible to refer to different kind of um, um, areas. First of all, we have to know this word comes from one of the word that makes it up um, has the root meaning of pattern, pattern. Love does not behave itself out of, out of pattern. Unseemly means out of pattern. Out of what is an acceptable pattern. All right? So that is, the, that is the main idea. That is the main idea. And with this word, 
it refers, it has many of this kind of meaning. If you want, you can write this down. It means it is not unbecoming, unbecoming. Right? Unseemly is, is unbecoming. Means it does not become someone. It is not uh, appropriate, not suitable. All right? So you have all this kind of meaning. Not appropriate, not suitable, and it is used actually to describe shame. Shame. It also has the meaning of exposing our private parts. All right? That kind of so it has to do with shamefulness, behaving in a way that is like it's so shameful in public. Hmm? So means it has to do with disgraceful. Love does not behave itself disgracefully. Remember, thinking is to control our actions. Now God is dealing with actions. So disgraceful. And it is means without proper deportment. You know, deportment, proper deportment means uh, behaving in the right way socially, carrying yourself the right way socially, deportment. Right, so this word has all these kind of meanings in there. So God says that we have to think thoughts that cause us not to speak or behave in ways that are unbecoming, disgraceful, out of place. That is what it is. When a Christian think of behaving a certain way that is like that, or think of saying certain things that falls in this category, it will cause us to, to act it out, to be such a person. Now again, before we study this word, I, I want to emphasize another thing before we understand this word, because we have to understand why God wants us to think lovely thoughts. Now, if you look at verses 4 to 6, or 4 to 7, you will notice that it can be categorized into at least two big categories. Now, one is how we think within us, right? It's like suffering long, kind, how we act towards others. That is definitely clear. But you would also know that when God says love, does not vaunt yourself, does not cause yourself to puff up. And then now he comes to does not behave unseemly. And in verse 5, he even says, seeketh not her own, and so on. Now, it now begins to describe our behavior that makes us unlovely. I want to say that again. When God says what is love and what love is not, it's also to teach us not to be behaving in an unlovely way. Not only not to be unloving towards others, God says what is being loving towards others, but God also says what is unlovely behaviors that make us unlovely, unlovable. That is why when Paul says, think of whatsoever things are lovely. Now earlier on, he dealt with Sinteke and Eudias. These two persons were were in, in all sorts of uh, conflict, all sorts of conflict, behaving in a way that each individual behaving in a way that is unlovely. And Paul says, can you please think rightly? Behave in a lovely way. Don't make it difficult for others in church. Think lovely ways, behave in a seemly way, and stop quarreling, having conflicts. When we are unlovely, we cause conflicts. We cause conflicts at home. I covered that. When we behave in unseemly ways, we break up our family. We break up friendships. We break up church friendships. So, at the end of the day, thinking seemly thoughts, 
then acting in a seemly way is important because it causes the unity of the community to be intact. That is important. It makes us Christ-like. It makes us lovely. The loveliest of all is Christ. So Christ would never behave in an unseemly way. So here God says, never, if you think seemly thoughts that are lovely, you will never behave in an unseemly way. All right? So this is emphasis. We must never behave like that. So what is unseemly? What is unseemly? As I look through this word being used in scriptures in several places, it has at least four, if not more, um, for usages and meanings. Now, one is quite obvious. One is it has to do with sexual shame, sexual shame, used in Romans chapter 1, where people behave um, without shame sexually towards each other, homosexuality, um, uh, fornication, and all that. So, so that is clear. That is obvious to us. God says that is never love. So young people, please understand this. From young, very young. The world today teaches us that premarital sex, sex outside marriage, is good, is fine. That everyone does it. It's normal. It's strange that you don't do it. They define that as love. But God says that is unseemly. That is not acceptable. True love is never unseemly. So if any boys tell you, uh, young girls, um, oh, I love you so much. You know, I want to sleep with you. You say that is not love. You know, run far away from such a boy. And the person may, be, may appear really so loving, so caring and all that. But the world thinks that that is love. I love you so much. And some girls are foolish enough to think that if I sleep with the person, I show him my love. Right? It's very distorted. So that is very clear, very simple, very obvious. So that is not love. That, so that's one word, that's one way it's being used. The other way is obviously words that have sexual innuendos, jokes. So that's unseemly. Don't even think of those things, God says, because eventually you will, you will make those jokes. Now, it's really very difficult these days to, to, to hear of clean jokes. Everything is full of sexual innuendos. God says those are unseemly, right? So, children in school, be very careful of that. You hear people talk about that, walk away, because it's going to linger in your mind. And then you're going to start laughing in your heart. But God says, never even let those thoughts cross your mind. You know, same for adults. You, I'm sure you hear these kind of things at workplace. Um, never let these thoughts linger. So that's one, very clear, simple. But be watchful, all right? Watch it. Be very careful. Your friends, your clients, your, 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 your colleagues, they begin to talk about those things. Clean your mind of it, because eventually you'll find it funny. Now, next. Next is used in 1 Corinthians 7. It is about neglect and failure to do what is right towards another. I say again, this word unseemly means neglect and failure to do what is right towards another. In other words, when God says, think of whatsoever things are lovely, what is a lovely behavior? Being considerate, being careful to think about what the other person um, should have should be taken care of. So that is seemly. That is seemly. Inconsiderate thoughts will lead to inconsiderate behaviors. Watch our thoughts. Always be very careful. Now we covered this kind of part of it in Husband's Fellowship. I don't know if the husbands remember. One of the words that we, are, we learned about husband's behavior towards the wife is be courteous. You realize that be courteous one to another. Courtesy. Courtesy. Considerateness. That is what it is. Courtesy. So God says that we must fill our minds with courteous 
thoughts, considerate thoughts. Enoch, <laughs> you asked me a question on Sunday. So Enoch asked, we, we talk about the, the, the tabernacle, why, why are things arranged like that? God sometimes does not give any order, right? God sometimes does not give, does not give anything in particular order, but he just commands and we just obey. So Enoch asked me, but then how come if God does not necessarily expect certain order of things, then how come the elderly must take food first, right? If there's no order, then why? The el why, pastor, you must always say the elderly take food first. Why? Because it is considerate, right? Because it is considerate. We must always be considerate towards others. Think of um, those that have needs. Be considerate. So, seemly thoughts. Those are lovely thoughts. The more considerate you are as a person in your thoughts, God says you're dwelling on lovely thoughts. So inconsideration is something that is, that is a failure to do what is right towards others and a neglect. Right? So that's another one that we learn. If you think of what sort of things of lovely, always think of those things. How can I be more considerate towards my wife, my husband, towards daddy and mommy, towards people in church, towards my colleague? Right, so this are, it's interesting to me as I studied this word, I began to realize that to think of things that are seemly and then to behave, it covers all these kind of very practical areas. Now, siblings, learn to be considerate. Hmm? Our church has many siblings now. Um, and one of the things that you must learn, God says, think of whatsoever things are lovely. So from now onwards, always be thinking of how can I be more helpful, kinder, um, more thoughtful. Okay? Cousins also. <laughs> Cousins also included. And definitely between the covenantal family members, right? Between worshippers. So that is another thing. But I, I just want to clarify just in case now, being considerate and thoughtful does not mean there is no order in church, right? There is still order. We still need to have order. So we, we need to be aware. Now, next one, very quickly, next one. Another area is, is used in um, being, in fact, the word itself means shameful, I said, right? Shameful and despicable. Shameful, despicable. So the word itself tells us not to behave in a shameful and despicable way towards others directly or behind their backs. Directly or behind their backs. Shameful behaviors towards others. It can be shameful words, despicable words, um, Things that are a reproach to others. So this word itself actually tells us that, in fact, its usage is we become, we do things or say things, I put it this way, we do things or say things that does not do good to others. In fact, the description that some definitions say is it is not serviceable to others. Not serviceable to others. Means, instead of doing service, you do disservice to others. What, is, what does it mean? Now, it means that instead of making someone else, um, I'll put it the other way, it is making someone else be disliked by others. For example, of such behaviors are gossips. Gossips. Gossips does not serve any purpose. Remember that. Not serviceable to anyone. Gossip only makes your brethren, your spouse, your colleague look bad and you look good. Right? So it does no service to others. Love is always for the good of others. Love is always towards others. Remember, it's towards God and towards men. So, love never, ever 
I say again, this double negative is a love never ever behaves like that. I think this is where many of us have to be very conscious of. Saying things directly to, to hurt someone. God says that if you ever think of thoughts, what can I go to church or what can I say to my spouse or what can I say to my colleague at work that will hurt the person? You hurt me, I double hurt you, hmm? right? So what can I, the moment you think like that, God says you are thinking thoughts that are unseemly. You want to hurt the person. Husband and wives, when there is arguments, never think of how, what should I say to hurt the other person back. Say sharp. Now, in fact, this word is, is also described as stabbing, right? It is, it is like, it's just so unseemly. It is to hurt someone, to poke someone. Now, actually, some people, they actually tell you, you know, I'm very good at insulting people. <laughs> at teens Q&A, they ask, is it, is sarcasm, is being sarcastic, breaking the, the ninth commandment, right? Sarcasm, right? So, being sarcastic is unseemly. See, God says, thoughts of love, things that are lovely, you never think, ever think, of doing or saying things that is to provoke, is to insult, is to make the person say, make the person cry. Make the person cry. I actually know of Christians who say this. Good, now you're crying. You know how I feel. Have you heard that? I hope no husband ever do this to spouse or to a new spouse do this to each other. You see your spouse cry now, that's good. Now, now you're hurting. I'm happy. You never do that. That's why God says, love never behaves in an unseemly way. If you love someone, you never, ever, you hurt me, I will hurt you, and if you cry, now you know how I feel, now I feel good. Finally, you're crying. That is very, very unchristian. Right? So don't ever be such a person. This is, this is very satanic, uh, very um, wrong, very wrong. Right, so that's another one. So watch our words. The next time you want to say something about someone to another person, be very, very careful. We will come to, we will come to what's the difference between gossip and helping another person? Because sometimes people come, Pastor, I'm not trying to gossip. Huh? And then <laughs> some things come out. Um, how do we know? Look at verse, um, verse, verse 6. Love rejoiceth not in iniquity. Love believeth all things. Verse 7, believeth all things. How to know the difference? We'll come to that, God willing, as we study. Then we know we are thinking lovely thoughts or not. Am I thinking gossipy thoughts? Or am I thinking thoughts that are love towards my brethren? We must know. So this is another area of, of, um, of this word, unseemly. Right. First, we have um, sexual unseemliness. Then we have failure to be considerate. We see that used in Scripture also. Um, then now we also have being despicable towards others. Being despicable towards others. Don't be a despicable person. Um, sometimes we feel ashamed after we behave that way. Maybe we should. We should apologize and we should change. Now, this whole chapter or this whole memory verse, I hope that we do not lose sight. I keep saying, please do not lose sight because sometimes we cover some things in depth. We get so lost in the details, we forget the picture of the whole forest, right? Do not love sight. Love, leave, lose sight. The whole point about memorizing this and knowing what lovely thoughts are is to change our behavior. I want to emphasize that again. Is to change our behaviors because the more I think about this, I think all these are so true about our own lives. I really hope that we don't finish this memory verse and then we move on and our lives did not change at all. That is something that I pray very much for myself. I pray for you all. 
Because if we are honest, we see all these behaviors in ourselves. We are people that, that act despicably towards others. We are people that are not considerate. Now, actually, it is linked, right? Now, if you really look at this, this verse, you look at verse 4. Now, first, in verse 4, the ending part of verse 4 is about pride. Am I right? Then it talks about now, pride, then after that, he God deals immediately about behaving unse- in unseemly ways. Then, immediately after that, he says, seeketh not her, her own. It's about selfishness. So, what sandwiches, what this, or rather, I put it this way, unseemly behaviors is sandwiched between pride and selfishness. God deals with it between pride and selfishness. When we are people that are proud in our thinking and selfish in our thinking, we behave in unseemly ways. Why do we gossip? Why do we attack others? Why do we do all these things? Because we like others to like us more. Pride. Why? Because we, we are selfish. We like to be liked. That is the whole problem. And that is a very natural part of man. Do you remember we, we looked at the verse, the spirit in us lusteth to envy. God says that is so us. That is so us. All these are so us. That is why God says, I will tell you the negative things. This is so you. This is so me. Stop behaving so you and so me. Please think rightly so that you will change. Do you want to change? Unseemly behaviors is what destroys a lot of friendships, destroy churches. Now, someone told me, and I thought about it, and I had to ponder. Someone told me, Pastor, why are you recently preaching about the church may break up, be very careful. Be very careful, the church may break up. They say, no, the church won't break up. From our history, the church broke up only because of the leaders. Leaders are the, one, are the ones that broke the church up. In our history, it's always the leadership. Members cannot break the church up. So I say, well, I'm not saying that there is any particular area that that I'm thinking of in particular that, but I say I'm, I'm just warning when the passage is there, I'll warn. Because we are in the middle of building, we're in the middle of um, having English and Chinese congregation, um, planning and all that, we are, in, we are sitting ducks to attack of Satan. Um, so I say I'm not thinking of anything in particular, but when I thought about it after some time, in the context of unlovely thoughts I said in the beginning of this part is what affects a community remember that it affects a community like Euodias and Sinteke it affected the church then I thought about it is it is it true to say only church leaders can cause the church to to have no peace to break up Euodias and Sinteke were not church leaders they were just ordinary members, as far as we know. Because our unseemly behavior, gossip, can turn people against people in church, can turn people against leaders in church. The unseemly, despicable, disgraceful gossips of members can cause groundswell. It can cause problems in church. Then when I think about it, yes, actually when I thought about it, churches have broke up, have broken up because of groundswell. The leaders were fine. So we can't say that only leaders can break up a church. There's no chance of members breaking up a church. Unseemly behaviors, unseemly thoughts. So be very careful of that. But I want to move on to the last one, but this part, I just want to emphasize this. Before we open our mouth to say something about someone, We will learn how to differentiate later. But at this point, know this. Do not 
do, be, do so because you're envious, because you're proud, because you want to hurt the person, because... Now, this part about seeketh not, her, seeketh not itself is really about seeketh not her own, is really about I want people to like me. I want people to be on my side. Do you understand? That is why we behave like that. You don't like your colleague, so you like to tell your boss or other colleagues about this colleague. And in this unseemly behavior, our thoughts will always be this. I will only tell half the story. Is it true? The other half of the story, I won't tell. Children, when you want to complain to mommy and daddy about your brother or sister, you only say what they did wrong. You never say what you do wrong. That is the behavior, same. We want someone to look back, that's how we behave. And the worst thing of all in this unseemly behavior and how it affects community, your, your diocese in Teke, for example, is, do you know the saying, misery loves company? Misery, you're miserable, you are, you're in misery, you are upset, you are, um, and all that, you're feeling all that kind of angry feeling, you're feeling miserable, you love company. In other words, you want others to also jump into that misery, boat of misery with you and empathize with you and agree with you and then you feel good. God says these are unseemly ways. It's shameful, despicable, it is to cause, to attack others. This is the word, this is what it means. You behave in an unseemly way towards another of no service to others. And I notice it is a very common behavior of humans. I don't think any one of us are spared from it. You don't like someone, you find someone to say something about that someone. And you won't say what is true. You will say certain things that are true. And then the other person agrees with you. Now you have people on your side and you feel good. God says this, are, this is exactly the meaning. Unseemly, attack someone, because you seek your own. And people who then turn you down, who say, ah, you know, this is not biblical, don't do this, stop it. And then you will move on to the next person until you find another person who would take your side and then you feel good. Parents, I hope you don't do that. You, you criticize your spouse so that your children will like you more. Parents do that, I've known that. Uh, Christian parents. So, you will keep moving from one to another and with unseemly behaviors and get someone to cite you. And the other unseemly behavior is this. You know that the other person is in misery. Even though you know the other person is wrong, you want to take that person's side because you like the person to like you. Do you know what I'm saying? You smile. <laughs> You see that at work very often. Um, there are people who, they know what is right and wrong, but they know that you are wrong or someone is wrong, but, but they take their side because they like to be liked. That's why love seeketh not her own. You're seeking your own. You want to be liked. I'll be in your shoes. You know, there was a pastor that caused a lot of problem in church and it's something that upset a lot of people. This pastor would take everybody's side. Means you come, I take your side. So when you complain, I take your side. Yeah, the person. Then after the other person come, I take the other person's side. Yeah, yeah, the other person. All right? Nothing gets solved in church and people just continue to behave in this unseemly way and there's no peace. Same at home. All right? So that's why we will learn later, love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It's very different, I understand that later. But for now, God says all this behavior, unseemly, very natural, very common among believers. Now the last one, and then we close, last one. Actually, we won't do the last one, all right? We, I'll continue the last one to bring it over to seeketh not her own. There is one more part, which when I understood the word, I said, wow, I did not know that was unseemly, and we should stop doing that. Right, for now, we just remember this few, and I hope that we 
really aim to change. The next time we want to open our mouth, ask ourselves, am I behaving in an unseemly way that is not serviceable to the other person? It brings no good to anyone. If I am, then I'm not thinking lovely thoughts. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we bow before you. Lord, we know that our flesh lusts to envy. We seek our own. We are so selfish, so self-centered. And because of that, Father, we know that we want to satisfy our flesh. We are always behaving and thinking in unseemly ways, causing hurt to many and feeling good when others are hurt and we are liked. Lord, it is so us. So, Father, we pray that having understood this aspect, you bring a change and when you do, we will respond. We will stop behaving in this way at home, at work, with our brethren, in church, with our siblings, with our friends. So, Lord, help us to be Christians that would behave in seemly way because we think of lovely thoughts. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.